Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, wanted to take a brief uh, minute of your time to walk through a couple of time value money calculations just to be able to set the stage, especially for those folks that may not have any experience uh, working in Excel. So what I have here is uh, the practice final exam, and I will basically use this template uh, throughout the course of our time together um, to just methodically work through a couple of problems um, with each module so we can see how things are set up and then I might uh, pose some some alternative um, twists and turns as we start to think about different ways and different permutations that can come off of each one of these um, you know sets of problems or type of problem um, through each module so first and foremost um, have problem number one um, Tom it's a time value money problem talking about putting $50,000 in the savings account at an annual compound interest of 10% for five years and then moving that uh, dollar amount over to another account that pays uh, interest compounded annually at 8% um, and with the basic question how much will your money have grown um, at the end of 10 years. So <clears throat> in this case, of course, we have this initial $50,000 um, amount. I'll basically un hide these things, right? So <clears throat> with this in mind, this is simply a future value problem, okay, where we have our 10%, that's the 10% here, um, for, and you notice in Excel, of course, when we open up our formula, it basically prompts us for the inputs and where it, it needs to be put um, in each case to be able to, to calculate. So here's our 10%, um, here's our number of periods at five, course if you notice here we skipped over the payment because it does not apply and our present value of fifty thousand dollars which of course we put in as a negative because it is coming out of our pocket it's a deposit or a withdrawal from an existing account whether that's you know your own pocket or wherever you want to take it from so that fifty thousand and we are not using type it doesn't uh, it's not bearing or pertinent to this problem so we hit enter and we get $80,000 as our um, basically our final sum after that initial five years okay but that's only the first part of the problem now the next part is and we move that amount to a savings account that pays 8% compounded annually okay so with that in mind all we're doing here is we take our now it's our 8% um, at another five-year time frame here I notice we've just linked these together. So this is a negative B5. So I've taken that 80,525.50 and moved it over to this account at 8%. And again, we're still skipping over, um, still skipping over the payment, still skipping over the type. Again, we hit enter and we end up with $118,318.38. So a couple different ways we can answer this question. How much will it have grown at, uh, at the end of 10 years? We can either um, offer up this number as the basically the total amount, or we can take the difference as I've done here, looking at uh, our final amount minus our initial fifty thousand dollar contribution for the actual difference um, between the initial dollar investment and the final um, amount uh, on account at the end of the ten year period. Okay. So second problem I want to cover is um, basically trying to figure out a payment. So I'm planning to purchase a new house for $750,000 um, and pay 10% down. Um, I will likely agree to pay the rest over 30 years in equal monthly payments um, plus 3.4% compound interest on the unpaid balance. What is the amount of each payment? So in this case, and we're not using um, time or we're not using present value, future value. We're using uh, the payment structure. So the first thing we need to do though is we need to break down this information. Um, into pieces that we can then use. Uh, first and foremost, <clears throat> we need to be able to break down um, our interest rate, okay? In this case, is 3.4% right here, okay? What we have to do is take that 3.4% and divide it into a monthly rate because we're at looking for a monthly payment. So in this case, it ends up with um, the, the, <laughs> the, the figure you see here, okay? We have uh, 360 um, total number of payments. Um, here we have our down payment, that's the $750,000 or 10% of that 750. And then of course we have our total loan amount, which is 
our original purchase price, seven hundred fifty thousand minus our down payment. Okay, so with all these um, calculated for us, we can now come over here and we can basically plug and play. So we have our payment. Okay, we just open up equal payment. First thing the the formula asks for is the rate, which of course in this case is our monthly rate because this is a monthly payment. <clears throat> Next, we have the number of periods involved. In this case, it's 360. We have our present value, which of course is our total loan amount. That's our starting loan amount, okay? And then the other factors involved are not pertinent uh, for our particular problem. So we hit enter, and we end up with our monthly payment, $2,993.50. Now, of course, if I was asked to compute an, an annual payment, in this particular case, it'd be a little bit easier. All we'd have to do is enter in the 3.4%, <clears throat> like so. Number of periods. In this case, instead of, if we're talking about um, paying off this same note, instead of 360 monthly payments, it would actually be 30 years, right? <clears throat> Present value, of course, would stay the same, so we put that in as a negative. We don't have the future value, just as we've done before. We can put in a zero here, okay? We're not using type. So if I were gonna pay this off on an annualized basis, one lump sum for, um, for 30 years, this is what I would have to basically put down um, every single year for the duration of that note. Okay, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for your attention, and we'll pick it up uh, with problem number three, risk and return, uh, the next time we get together. Thanks.